So now we're going to move to yes, that's correct with read and repeat backs communication clarifiers. So the first thing here is we're going to talk about three-way repeat backs. So this is a communication tool for confirming the accuracy of verbal information transfer. So what this looks like is you have a sender and they provide a request of information to a receiver in a clear and concise format. The receiver acknowledges that information and repeats it back. And then to close the loop, the sender either verifies that that information is correct, correct saying that's correct, or correcting it and then going back through the loop again. I want to make sure that we say the words that's correct instead of that's right, because occasionally the directionality of right may confuse the situation again. Um, but this is really important. Um, I think this is one of the things that we really should start doing a lot more of. We should be doing this numerous times a day in our, um, in our work at the hospital. And I think starting to get to this point to do that, it's a little bit awkward when the sender is probably not necessarily used to having us get ready to repeat that back. And so sometimes it's helpful to say, let me repeat that back, rather than just suddenly doing it and catching the muck guard. And then, like I said, it's important to close that loop and say, yes, that's correct. Um, so here is a video. The leaders of the quality movement tell us that communication is a major component of almost every serious system failure. The following clip captures the essence of some of the challenges we face. Watch out! something very important, all right? Okay. I want you to run home and I want you to call the ER of North Bank General Hospital, 932-1000. Tell them to set up OR6 immediately and contact anesthesiologist Isadora Turek, 472-2112, beep 12. Have them send an ambulance with a paramedic crew, light IV, D5 and W, KBO. You got it? ER North Bank General Hospital, 932-1000, set OR6 contact anesthesiologist Isadora Turek, 472 tb 12 I'm being able to do it with the Paramux and Lavi, D5 and WKVL. That's good. Sounds like a subdural hematoma to me. Oh, it does, does it? Well, it's not your job to diagnose. But I thought... You thought, you thought, just go! Three years of nursery school, you think you know it all, but you're still wet behind the ears. It's not a subdural hematoma, it's epidural. Ha! All right, now, um... Readbacks are very um, similar to repeatbacks, but there are times when the information is critical enough that you need to actually write it down and then read back what you actually wrote down rather than just repeat back what you heard. And the times when this is um, uh, especially important um, are when there's critical test results, verbal orders, and telephone orders. So you should actually, if you're taking that information, you need to actually write it down and then read what you wrote down back and get verification with that's correct from the person that sent the information to begin with. I mean, if you think about how many times you go to you know, a party and you get introduced to somebody and you two seconds later don't even remember their name, it would be very easy to think you remembered it and then didn't. And so sometimes it's really important just to write that down and then read it back. The, the repeat, is, uh, repeat back is one of the most powerful tools and something uh, that you should make habit both at work and at home. And we learned it the hard way that repeat back is very important. We are uh, not very good campers and we went camping and we tried to build a campfire. And although every other location had a nice fire going, we couldn't get a fire going at all. So the next time we went camping, we brought a little butane lighter. And so we went camping and since I'm telling the story, I'll tell, I'll tell the truth. <laughs> uh, I was putting butane on there, and Ellen said, do you want me to light it? And I clearly said no. Yeah? No, no, I said no. Said yeah? <laughs> well, it would have been a good opportunity for a repeat back, because she lit it, and we blew up, and we knocked my niece down, our son down, we were blown out of our chairs. We got the fire lit, though. <laughs> so, so something you can apply. 
I at home. <laughs> Our last um, commitment here is yes, that's correct. We're going to talk about phonetic, numeric, and general clarifying questions. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the phonetic alphabet. Um, this is to use for sound alike words or letters. Um, this is one particular type of phonetic alphabet. There are more than one. This is this in particular is the one used by the aviation industry, nuclear power, telecommunications. Um, and it's important, you don't have to necessarily use a standard alphabet, but if you're not going to use a standard phonetic alphabet, you should think about what you're going to use instead, because you could find yourself in a situation where suddenly you say F is in phone, or Z is in xylophone, and that obviously is going to make things a little bit more confusing. Um, and you don't necessarily need to spell the entire word out phonetically. In all cases, you just want to spell the parts that could be confused. So neurology consult to room 405, that's neurology with an N as in November, or code blue in room 330B, that's B as in Bravo. Numeric clarification, so there are certain numbers that sound alike, particularly some of the teens and their corresponding tens. So 15, that's 50, or 50, that's 50, that's how you should clarify it. It's also important to remember that ranges, when you say something like four to five, that could be confusing as the number two. Four to five. Um, so you want to say that's the range four dash five. Um, and then also with decimals, it's really important to always make sure that you say the leading zero. So 0 0.9, because if you forget to say that and you don't hear the point, you're going to be off by at least a factor of 10. And then the last thing is to remember that um, asking one or two clarifying questions can be really, really helpful in reducing errors. Um, just asking one or two can decrease an error by two and a half times, and you want to ask in high-risk situations or when information is incomplete or not clear. Um, a safety phrase would just be simply to say, let, let me ask a clarifying question. That way it's not accusatory. You're not saying, you were so confusing, and I don't know what you said. You just say, kind of put it back on yourself. Let me ask a clarifying question. Um, so a couple of tools in action, and an engineer uses mnemonic clarifiers. That's 550 when reporting and equipment reading to biomedical. Physician requests a read back after phoning in an order. So just at your tables, again, um, practice the um, phonetic and numeric um, clarifiers. Uh, maybe think about your initials in the phonetic alphabet. Um, think about any barriers that you might have in your where you work to using some of these. All right, so what's A? I alpha. 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 Bravo. Bravo. Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima, Mike, November, Oscar, Papa, Quebec, Romeo, Sierra, Tango, Uniform, Victor, Whiskey, X-Ray, Yankee. Amy's got them all. I think at Mountain Family they're going to be doing this all the time. Amy's got them down. <laughs>